Welcome! And on today's show, I get my hands on an iconic Casio that's not digital. What enough? But first... Today's awesome shot comes from Watch Reactions. Now this is an amazing photo of the Casio FS10. Came out in 1985 and just look how thin this thing is. Quite possibly the only watch I've ever seen where the head of the watch is thinner than the strap. Such a bold looking design with that LCD screen going diagonal. Looks like all the buttons are on the face of the watch as there just is no room on the sides. It's another stunning example of just how prolific prolific Casio were in those days. And each time you look at a certain reference that isn't made anymore, you find seven more that you're even more interested in. Thank you so much for tagging me in on that, my friend. It's highly appreciated. If you'd like to be on the next Casio Corner, all you gotta do, find me on Instagram here and tag me in on one of your Casio posts. Who knows? Next time, the star of the show could be you. So yes, we take a look at an actual Casio Diver. And that's your watch out. Well, I am wearing another Casio beauty, the A168WA. The slightly beefed up F91W with a loom, you're less likely to get embarrassed about showing. What a beautiful retro stunner. <laughs> Looks like I got one, Bill. What you got there, Joey? <laughs> Got myself from Ireland. So yes, we're talking about a three-hand dive watch from Casio that has been praised around the globe. Basically, because what you get for your money is quite a lot. Now, I've always been put off buying one of these watches. Can't quite put my finger on it. Hang on, I know. It's too big. But that doesn't mean I can't review it, can't appreciate it, and can't tell you to buy one. I am, of course, talking about the MDV-106, otherwise known as the Juro or Marlin. Marlin. Take your pick. Now this watch is due to be re-released very soon with a couple of little differences to the ones you can buy now. But because of that, the prices of these current Marlins are pretty low. I tried to buy one of these before Christmas and on Amazon they were going for around £70. Three weeks ago, however, I found them on Amazon for £42. So I thought, who cares if it's too big? With a price like that, I'd make anything work. <laughs> This watch has been spotted on the wrist of Bill Gates. And I love how people sometimes think that that's justification for getting the watch, as in we'd like to be Bill Gates. We don't wanna be like Bill Gates. We'd like his money for a day, but that's as far as we go. For Bill, I'm sure it's a statement he's trying to make when he makes his public appearances. We all know that once he gets in the doors of his own house, he'll put his slippers on, go up the stairs to his bedside table, chuck that Juro off, and shove on one of his 500 Patek Philippe's. Anyway, let's show you the watch, go through the usual MWC rundown, and I've got some exciting news to tell you at the end. Are you ready? Let's go! So yes, here it is, the Casio Duro. And it is such a striking looking watch, isn't it? On first impressions, looks a hell of a lot more than the 42 pounds I paid for it. With the rubber strap, this watch weighs around 90 grams, which is a fair heft, isn't it? And definitely feels more expensive as well as looks it. Now, unlike most of the Casio digitals we know, if it's got a stainless steel looking case, it's probably plastic resin. But not with this thing. This is solid stainless steel on the case, the bezel, the crown and the case back. And you know what? I do like it. Now, amazingly, even on this price point, we have got different finishes on the case. It's brushed on the tops of the lugs. We have a little chamfering between that and the transition to polishing on the sides. Screw down crown at three o'clock with some nice looking hefty crown guards. That coupled with the screw down case back, we have got a 200 meter water resistant diver. A little longer look at that case back and we have that famous Marlin etched in the back as we have printed on the dial. We'll go through the rather crappy rubber strap in a minute. Quick spec check. So it's a 44 millimeter case. Buzz your girlfriend, woof. Even though it's such a huge watch. It's only got a lug to lug of 49 mils. Thickness of just under 12 and a half millimeters. You'd like to see a thinnish case, bearing in mind this is a quartz watch. And we've got a lug width of 22 millimeters. That generic 22 millimeter lug width is gonna be great for you. Do you know why? Because you may wanna shove that rubber strap in a drawer somewhere that never gets opened again. <laughs> 
It's okay for what you pay. I'm surprised the thing came with a strap at all. It's a dive style rubber resin looking strap. A little bit softer than a G-Shock, but there's enough ventilation underneath that strap to help your wrist breathe. Okay, on to the bezel. We have 120 clicks. It's unidirectional with an aluminium insert. Also a lovely little loom pip at the 12 o'clock triangle. Hi, I'm Kurt Santana and you're watching the World Bezeling Federation. Dedicated to finding the best bezel on a watch. We go through three rounds. The look, the grip, and the fidgetability. Super! Our referee today is Brian. Say hello, Brian. Okay, let's, let's get, get a bezel in. First, the look, and this has a beautiful aluminum insert. Great looking grip, reminds me of a Rolex I once had before I pawned it off to hamburger money. The referee scores a six, not bad. On to the grip. The ratcheting, the purchase. How easy is this to twist? But we don't want it to be too easy. Also pretty good. Add on to the fidgetability. How much do I want to twiddle this thing? Morning, noon, and night. A fair five. That gives the total score of 17 and puts the Casio Duro on our leaderboard for 2021. Ciao. You know what? This is not bad at all. Have a listen. There's a little back play to it. It reminds me of the Orient Ray 2. You can't complain about that bezel for the money we pay. It's dial time. And I've got to say, I love the simplicity of it. At first glance, it's very plain looking, but if you look deeper, you can see the dial is not just black. It's got this fantastic sunburst effect. So along the outside, we have a chapter ring showing us the minutes. Now, from what I found out, the markers showing the hours do look applied, but they are in fact pushed in from the back to make them look as if they're applied. Clever boys and girls. The markers do remind me of a Submariner, but the whole thing looks very legible, doesn't it? All the arrow markers are framed in silver, and I think it looks really smart. Just below the 12 o'clock marker, we have printed Casio. They could have quite easily put about three lines under that Casio, so you've got to say well done to them for not overdoing it. Below the handset, we have that iconic picture of the Marlin, and I love it. It gives this watch character. It also tells you, yeah, Yes, you can swim with this watch. And below the Marlin, we have water resistant to 200 meters. Onto the handset. And I really like these too. Framed in silver like the markers. I love that arrow hour hand. Good solid sword minute hand. And look at that touch of red. That is a superb design choice. As you can see, we've got a date window at three o'clock. It's got a printed white frame around it. And the date wheel is white. And I think it works really well. <laughs> So we got loom on the handset, loom on the markers, loom pip on the bezel. Let's see how bright this is. Okay, so not great on the loom, but if I was a professional diver, I doubt very much I'd be wearing this one. Inside this puppy, we have the Casio 2784 quartz movement. This thing is accurate to minus or plus 15 seconds per month. This is an accurate beta. Okay, to operate this watch is very simple. Unscrew the crown and you get a definite pop. Pop it out to the first position and we get our quick set date. Pull out to the last position and we have hacking and we can change the time. Push it back in and let's see that red tick again. Hello. On my six and a half inch wrist, and do you know what? I think I can pull it off. I think I can pull it off. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's big, but that short lug to lug and the thickness of it, it sort of works. Obviously I'm pushing barriers here and I'm slightly kidding myself, but it definitely doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. It's a win for the small wrist club. <laughs> Okay, so there's the watch. Do you know what? I've come away quite impressed. There is no way this watch looks like a 40 pound watch. The materials of the case, the bezel insert and the action of that bezel definitely feels like a 100 to 150 pound watch. Because of the brush surfaces and the polished surfaces, you can wear this to the office as well as wearing it for a quick game of table tennis. I mean, yes, there's no getting away around the fact that it is a big watch. How many more of these Juros would they sell if this was a 40 mil case. Cassio, Cassio are, you, are listening? you listening? They usually do listen. Here it is. My wife's first impressions of the watch. Are you ready? Here we go. It's too big. The bezel looks cheap.
Now I bought this watch for the channel. I very much doubt I'm gonna be wearing it. Too big! So I'm gonna give it away to one of you lovely lot. Yes, all you have to do to enter this competition is obviously be a subscriber to the channel. But here comes the fun part. You are on the board of designers for Casio and the year is 1994. Everyone around the table is pitching their idea for the next Casio. I want you to give me a name of a new Casio and tell me the new functions it has. That the masses will like. Up. Obviously, it's not the easiest of questions because I think Casio pretty much did everything. <laughs> the winner will be announced two weeks from this show being aired, and I can't wait to see the suggestions. From me, the Mad Watch Collector, I'll see you in a tick, 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 a tick. <laughs>